Hello how video order stuff, welcome back. I just wanted to make a short video for you guys about how I do this YouTube presenting thing and avoid jump cuts. And I'll let you into a little secret that you already knew. Like most other guys on YouTube, I film these videos bit by bit, paragraph by paragraph. You know what I mean by jump cuts? That annoying thing you see in videos where the scene just suddenly cuts to another point in time. It's kind of just jarring, but actually seems to be acceptable. For vloggers on YouTube, you know who I'm talking about. But I reckon even the relaxed vlog style shooters could, with very little effort, make things slightly more slick. So let's jump straight in and check out the simple things I do to avoid jump cuts and make your chopped up footage look more natural. My absolute favorite way of not having jump cuts is to use B-roll. You know what I mean by B-roll? Basically any other footage that you get when you're in a location. In my case, I do camera related videos, so it could be footage of gear, locations, screen flows, that kind of thing. Let me show you an example. Here's a project where you can see I've used a ton of B-roll to cover those jump cuts. When I disable the B-roll clip, you can see that this hides a nasty jump cut where I go from not holding the lens to having the lens in my hands. At that point in the video, I was talking about the quality of the lens hood. So naturally, I showed a clip of the lens hood. I love my B-roll clips to have that really silky smooth movement to them, so I use a slider, but you don't have to, you could just use a normal tripod head and add some movement with pans and tilts and that kind of thing. Lately I've been loving stop motion, which if you're not sure what that is, it's just a whole load of photos stitched together and it looks amazing. Uh, I might do a video about it at some point, so check it out, stop motion, it's cool. But I would say a really good rule of thumb approach to B-roll in your videos is if you say it, show it. Another thing I do really often is crop the image when I need to make a cut to give the illusion that I'm cutting to a second camera angle. Usually cropping in to about 120% is enough to make the scene look different enough. Of course it helps shooting in 4K as you get a lot of resolution to play with. Here we have another nasty jump cut that would be pretty obvious if I left it as it is. So what we're going to do is crop the second image to 120% or thereabouts and then shift the position so it looks natural as if you're framing it with a second camera. I'm then going to add just a tiny bit of sharpening and then also a vignette because most lenses have a tiny bit of vignette. So adding one to this frame gives it the impression that it's coming from a different angle, a different camera. It's worth noting that this technically still is a jump cut of sorts. It's just a well disguised one. Those in the know will know what's going on, but I think it's different enough that it doesn't look jarring. And that's the point, and I think it really works. Possibly the most obvious thing you can do to hide jump cuts is to use transitions. The thing is, they're generally a little cheesy looking, and depending on the type of transition you pick, it can send the wrong message to your viewers. For example, a classic crossfade could indicate the passing of time, when that's not the story you're trying to tell. But a side swipe could indicate the change of subject matter, which could be more useful for this kind of thing. Personally, I find the stock transitions you find in editing software to be pretty cheesy, so I don't tend to use them. However, there are some really good third-party transition packs out there, and I'll link a few of my favorites down below. Making your own transitions is fun and can be quite easy, this one I can't take credit for, this is one of Peter McKinnon's tricks. When we play it back, we can see this actually looks really slick, um, but what the hell's going on here? When I open up the clip to show you actually what's going on, it's just me throwing the camera around, getting some nice rolling shutter going. But just a split second of that really fast movement seems to look really cool when you bridge it between two jump cuts, and I love it. I'll run this extremely short film at the end of this video that I shot in Berlin, and then you can see this technique in action then. For many, using a teleprompter takes away from the organic feel of the way they talk to the camera. But recently I snapped one up and I found it pretty life changing. It has without doubt sped up my workflow no end. The only thing I'll say is that you'll need to make sure you write the content in the way that you would say it without using a teleprompter. With a teleprompter, I can film and therefore edit much more efficiently. The one I picked up is the Parrot teleprompter and I'm so impressed with it. It's small, compact and really affordable. You just use it with your smartphone and the Parrot app and it just screws into the front of your lens. I'll pop a link below if you want to check it out, but I can highly recommend it, it's awesome. Just to play devil's advocate a little, jump cuts can be powerful in some instances. 
I'd still say that they're inappropriate for most videography, but the jarring nature of a jump cut can add an unpredictable, surprising feel to your video. In this video, I used jump cuts to list things that I liked about a product. I could have just listed the features, but actually I quite like the way that just my fingers were moving. I've also used jump cuts when editing music videos. What you can do is chop up the footage and sync it to the beat, and it really, really works. I really think it's effective. Jump cuts definitely split the crowd, and there will definitely be some strong opinions out but out there, but to jump cut or not to jump cut, whatever you decide, make it deliberate and intentional. And that's it for now. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today. As always, I've loved making this video for you guys. If you're still in the mood for more dope videos about video, I'll pop a couple of interesting ones over here. And if you're not subscribed yet, just hit this blob right here. And until next time, let's help each other out and shoot better video. See you next time, guys. <laughs>